Hey, Josh, there's a reason for my loopiness today. Have you heard about these new football rankings? Huh, take the BCS, you change the B to an M, and you got some major controversies. But first, oh, I love movie sequels. And with Rocky Six on the way, we'll take Sly Stallone, put him in a ring against some other sequel greats from the past. Oh, it's gonna be a first round knockout. Next, on Classic Now. And after a watershed weekend on the college gridiron and the subsequent release of the year's first BCS poll, predictable controversy ensued as the BCS and AP rankings varied significantly. So it's a perfect moment for the Master Coaches Survey, created by a consortium of former coaches in the hopes of offering an alternative to the much maligned BCS. Let's take a look at the top 10 of this week's Master Coaches Survey and as you can see, a major shakeup at the top. The after effects of Notre Dame's performance against USC this past Saturday being felt much more strongly with the coaches than it was with the BCS. The Trojans now fall from the top spot to number two. They are replaced by the Texas Longhorns coming off their big win over Colorado. Rounding out the top 10, or the top 9, as it were, Texas Tech moves up three spots to climb into a tie for the number 9 spot. And Notre Dame, despite that effort that knocked SC out of the top spot, falls out of the top 10 entirely. Today, to break it down for us, are two of the master coaches involved. West Virginia legend Don Nealon and the coach who led Alabama to the 1992 National Championship, Gene Stallings. Coach Nealon, what exactly did Texas do to climb over USC in your survey? Well, to be honest, I've had Texas rated just a crack ahead of USC for the last couple weeks. And I say that because if you look at the total picture, I think that Texas has a very, very good offensive football team. I also think they have a very, very good defensive football team. I also think their special team play is very, very good. When I look at Southern California, I see an outstanding offensive football team. I see a solid kicking game, and I see a defense that I think struggles now and then. I'm just not positive that their defense is as strong as Texas. They both have a super win. Uh, Ohio, uh, you know, Texas goes to Ohio State and wins, and uh, USC goes to Notre Dame and wins. So it, it's awful tight. I, I, I want you to understand, I think USC is a great team, but I rate Texas just a hair above them. Coach Dollins, USC does go into South Bend to knock off a number nine Notre Dame team. So is it something that Texas has done for, in your mind, or is it something that SC perhaps didn't do? Well, it, uh, I'm a whole lot locked down. I've had Texas number one uh, for at least three weeks, uh, maybe four weeks. Uh, there's not a thing well obviously wrong with, with Southern Cal. They're a great football team. Uh, they're playing a good, tough schedule. They've got probably the best running back in the country. But if you coach long enough, and you are at a school that can recruit the outstanding talent, such as the University of Texas. Uh, you'll have a team like this every once in a while. I, I really can't see a weakness on their football team. It all started when they beat the University of Michigan in the Rose Bowl. I think they really uh, got a jump start from that, had outstanding uh, spring practice, beat Ohio State in Columbus. A big game for the University of Texas was when they uh, played Oklahoma, won that game, and they've got a quarterback that's just, in my opinion, second to none. They've got depth. They can run the football. They're playing defense better than I've seen them. It's not anything wrong with Southern Cal. And people say, what well, do you think that Southern Cal deserves to be there? Well, it's not a matter of whether or not they deserve it or not. It's in the opinion of the coaches who's the best football team. We think it's Texas. And we should point out that there are only five small points separating the two. So it's essentially at this point a dead heat. Co Coach Nealon, to Notre Dame, why do you suppose there's such a discrepancy between Notre Dame's survey ranking and their AP ranking, which both have them still in the top 10 and their BCS ranking, I'm sorry, the survey has them at number 11, and the BCS, which has them at number 16 and essentially out of the national championship picture. Well, I think Notre Dame's done a great job. I think their coaches have done an outstanding job, and I, I think they deserve uh, the ranking that we have with them. Uh, I don't think they're ranked 16th. Uh, I think they're better than 16th, in my opinion. I've looked at that team also, and uh, they play great offensive football. Their quarterback is doing a great job. Their special teams are good. Notre Dame's done a fine, fine job. I think they're deserving of where we have them.
Coach Stallings, what do you think of Notre Dame's place in your survey as opposed to where they are in the BCS on the outside looking in? Well, first of all, there's no question they're one of the better football teams in the country. Just because you lose a game, and you lose a game to Southern Cal, and it's a close game right down to the right down to the end of the game, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you drop 15 points just because you lost a game against a good football team. Uh, I, I feel the same way Don does. I, I think they're an excellent team. They are a turnaround team. That, to me, makes it more important. They're playing Southern Cal, who's on a two or three year win streak. They've got a new coach. Is giving them some enthusiasm. They're staying healthy, and I definitely think they're in the top ten. In fact, they were in my vote. Coach Nealon, obviously one of the big complaints about the BCS throughout the years is how does it account for multiple teams that are undefeated? Right now we have Virginia Tech and Georgia undefeated, and they can't crack that top two really in anybody's poll. How do we determine for multiple undefeateds who really is number one, number two, and then number three and four? Well, you know, if they if they finish undefeated, there's no question that's tough. But uh, at least you got 16 guys who have spent their lifetime coaching football. We study the film. We look at them very closely. Uh, we don't have any axe to grind. We think we probably offer the best alternative to anybody in the country. Hey, I'm a Virginia Tech guy. They just left the Big East. They play great defense. They play great, great special teams. Their quarterback is playing excellent football. Hey, they're they're deserving to be right there at number three and who knows maybe they should be number two you don't know how this thing's going to play out yet Texas has a big ball game uh, this week with Texas Tech and you know uh, Virginia Tech has to go to Maryland Thursday and they they have a tough schedule and they're going to have to if they win that ACC they're going to have to play in that championship game and so a lot of things can happen and speaking of undefeated teams and tough schedules, Tennessee comes calling in Alabama, to Alabama, Coach Stallings. They are right now number five and undefeated. What do you think of the job that Coach Mike Shula has done down there in Tuscaloosa? First of all, I think he's done an outstanding job. I, I just I, I can't say enough good things about the way the Alabama football team is playing right now. When they beat Florida... Uh, a few weeks ago. That's the first big win that they've had. They've played pretty well, but they haven't beaten a good football team. I, I think confidence-wise, they are at an all-time high. Uh, they're looking forward to playing Tennessee. I think they feel like they can beat Tennessee. In my opinion, they're a better football team than Tennessee. There's some bad blood between these two teams. Uh, it's it's going to be a noisy stadium, and uh, it's, it's going to be... See, Alabama in my opinion, he's playing about as good as anybody in the country right now, but they, they still have LSU to play, uh, they still have Auburn to play, they have Tennessee to play, so some of those undefeated teams are not going to be undefeated when the year is over. And maybe they can vault and knock Texas out, and then we'll have even more to talk about next week. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today, Coach Nealon and Coach Dollings. Thank you.